It's important to know that there are a couple of command line interfaces, or CLIs, available in Windows. The first one is called the command prompt, command.exe. The second one is PowerShell, or powershell.exe. The command prompt has been around for a very long time. It's very similar to the command prompt that was used in MS-DOS. Since PowerShell supports most of the same commands as command prompt, and many, many more, we're going to use PowerShell for the exercises in this module. I want to call out that many PowerShell commands that we'll use are actually aliases for common commands in other shells. An alias is sort of like a nickname for a command. The first command that we'll use is for listing files and directories. Let's start by listing the directories in the root of our C drive. The C drive is where the Windows operating system is installed. For many of you, it might be the only hard drive that you have in your computer. To get to the PowerShell CLI, just search in your Applications list PowerShell. From here, we can go ahead and launch the PowerShell program. We're going to use the ls or list directory command and give it the path of where we want to look. The path is not actually part of the command, but it is a command parameter. You can think of parameters as a value that's associated with a command. Now you can see all the directories in the root of your C drive. You might just see a few or a whole bunch of directories. It all depends on what your computer is used for. The C drive root folder is what we call a parent directory, and the contents inside are considered child directories. As you continue to work with operating systems, you'll encounter terms that may seem a bit out of place at first, but they actually make a lot of sense. Parents and children are common terms that stand for hierarchical relationships in OSs. If I have a folder named dogs and a second folder nested within that folder called corgi, dogs would be the parent directory and corgi would be the child directory. Let's look at a few of the common child directories in this folder. Program files x86. These directories contain most of the applications and other programs that are installed in Windows. Users. This contains the user profile directories or home directories. Each user who logs into this Windows machine will get their own directory here. Windows. This is where the Windows operating system is installed. If we open up PowerShell and run get-help ls, we'll see the text describing the parameters of the ls command. This will give us a brief summary of the command's parameters, but if you want to see more detailed help, try get-help ls-full. Now you can see a description of each of the parameters and some examples of how to use the command. What if we wanted to see all the hidden files in this directory? Well, we can use another useful parameter for the ls command, dash force. The dash force parameter will show hidden and system files that aren't normally listed with just ls. Now you can see some important files and directories, like recycle bin. This is where the recycle bin lives. When you move files to the recycle bin, they're moved to this directory instead of being deleted immediately. Program data. This directory contains lots of different things. In general, it's used to hold data for programs that are installed in program files. All right. Now that you've seen how to take a look around the file system in Windows, let's see what this process looks like in Linux. When you first open PowerShell, you'll usually be in your home directory. Your prompt shows you which directory you're currently in, but there's also a command that will tell you where you are. PWD, or Print Working Directory, tells you which directory you're currently in. If we want to change the directory that we're in, we can use the CD, or Change Directory, command. To use this command, we'll also need to specify the path that we want to change to. Remember, this path can be absolute, which means it starts from this drive letter and spells out the entire path. On the flip side, it can be relative, 
meaning that we only use part of the path to describe how to get to where we want to go relative to where we currently are. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So right now we're in C backslash user Cindy. Let's say that instead I want to go to C backslash users backslash Cindy backslash documents. What do you think the command would look like here? Here it is. C D C backslash users backslash Cindy backslash documents. And now we've changed to the documents directory. We used an absolute path to get to this directory, but this can be a little cumbersome to type out. We know that the documents directory is under the Cindy folder. So can't we just go up one level to get to that folder? We absolutely can. There's a shortcut to get to the level above your current directory. CD dot dot. Let's run the PWD command one more time. Now we can see that I'm in C backslash users backslash Cindy, the parent directory of where I was before. The dot dot is considered a relative path because it'll take you up one level relative to where you are. Let's go back to the documents folder and try this again, except this time, let's go to the desktop folder using the new command we learned. We know that the desktop and document directories are under the home directory, so we could run cd dot dot, then cd desktop, but there's actually an easier way to write this. cd dot dot backslash desktop. Let's check PWD one more time. PWD now shows that we're in the desktop folder. Sweet. Another cool shortcut for CD that you can use is CD tilde. The tilde is a shortcut for the path of your home directory. Let's say I want to get to the desktop directory in my home folder. I can do something like this. CD tilde backslash desktop. We've done quite a bit of typing so far. You might actually be wondering what would happen if we messed up while typing these directory names. How are we supposed to memorize where everything is and if it's spelled correctly? Fortunately, we don't have to do that. Our shell has a built-in feature called tab completion. Tab completion lets us use the tab key to auto-complete file names and directories. Let's use the tab completion to get to our desktop from our home directory. If I type D and then tab, the first file or directory starting with D will now complete. Now, if this isn't the file or directory that I was looking for, I can continue to press tab and the path will rotate through all the options that complete the name that I started to type. So I'll see desktop and then documents and then downloads. Take note that the dot in front of the path of dot backslash desktop just means the current directory. If I erase this and instead type DE then the only directory that matches is desktop. Tab completion is an awesome feature that you'll be using more and more as you continue to work with commands. Now that we've covered listing and changing directories, let's learn how to add new directories. We can do this in the GUI in a super simple way. Just right click, new, then folder, and bam, we have a new folder. Now, what if we wanted to do this in the CLI? In PowerShell, the command to make a new directory is called make dir or make directory. Let's make a new directory called my underscore cool underscore folder. There it is. That was easy. What if we wanted to use spaces in our folder name instead of underscores? What do you think would happen if I did this instead? Make dir my cool folder. That's an error. Make dir is trying to interpret cool and folder as other parameters to the make dir command. It doesn't understand those words as valid parameters. 
turns out that our shell doesn't interpret spaces the way we do. So we need to tell it explicitly that this folder name is one single thing. We can do this in a variety of ways. We can surround the name with quotes, like make dir my cool folder. Or we can escape the space by using the backtick character. Make dir my backtick cool backtick folder. Escaping characters is a pretty common concept when dealing with code. It means that the next character after the backtick should be treated literally. In our example, escaping the space tells the shell that the space after the backtick is part of our file name. While the backtick is the escape character in PowerShell, other shells and programming languages may use another character as an escape character. You'll see this in the next video. Picking right up from the last video, let's say we want to make a couple of directories, my cool folder 2 and my cool folder 3. We could just type make dir my cool folder 2 and then type again my make dir my cool folder 3. But instead, we're going to use another cool PowerShell feature called history. Each and every time you enter in a command, it gets saved into memory and added to a special file. You can go through the previous commands you used with the history command. I'm now showing a list of commands that I entered earlier. This information alone isn't very useful. Instead, there's a better use of the history that lets us quickly scroll through these commands and use them again. We can scroll through these commands with the up or down keys on our keyboard. I'm going to go up to my previous command and I should see that I had make dir my cool folder. Instead of typing the whole thing to make a new folder, I'm just going to append the number 2 to my command. And boom! A new file was created without having to type everything over again. Cool, right? You can even search through your previously used commands using the history shortcut Control R. From here, you can start typing bits and pieces of the command you want to look for, and it'll show you matches. Let's search for the word folder. I should see the make dir commands I was using before. Pretty neat. If you're using an older version of PowerShell, it may not have the control R feature. If that's the case, you can type the pound symbol followed by some part of your old command, and then use tab completion to cycle through the items in your history. The history feature along with tab completion and get-help will be your best friends while you work in PowerShell. Keep them close to you and get to know them super well. Hmm, our shell is looking a little cluttered. It's kind of hard to see where I'm at, so let's clean up our shell a little bit. We can do that with the clear command. This doesn't wipe your history, it just clears the output on your screen. Ah, it looks a little better. We've already created a few files and directories, but we need a couple more. We don't want to create them all from scratch, so let's make copies instead. In the Windows GUI, all you need to do is right-click, copy, then paste. You can also use hotkeys if you want. A hotkey is a keyboard shortcut that does some sort of task. In Windows, the hotkey for copy is Control C, and for paste, it's Control V. In PowerShell, the command used to copy something is CP. We also need to add a file that we want to copy and the path of where we want to copy it to. Let's copy mycoolfile.txt to the desktop. There you can see my cool file.txt was added to our desktop. I have a few of these files I want to move over, but I'm feeling a little lazy and don't want to run this command over and over again. 
So I'm going to use something called a wildcard to help me copy over multiple files at once. A wildcard is a character that's used to help select files based on a certain pattern. Let's say I want to get all the files that were JPEGs and copy them somewhere. I'm going to go into my documents directory. I have files called hotdog.jpg, cottoncandy.jpg, and pretzel.jpg. I need to come up with a pattern to help me select all these files. What do they have in common besides being named after delicious food? The .jpg extension. Literally anything else can be in front of the .jpg file extension and it won't matter. That's what the wildcard asterisk does. It's the pattern for anything. So I'm essentially saying select all the files with the pattern anything.jpg. So to copy over all the JPEGs in the folder, I can use cp, the asterisk symbol, dot JPEG, and the path I want to copy them to. Let's just verify. There it is. Now instead of copying files one by one, we can use a single command to get all the files we want. For now, the only selector we'll be using is the asterisk for all. Next up, let's say I want to copy over a directory. I'm going to try to copy a folder called bird pictures to my desktop. Let's just go back into documents. There's bird pictures. Now I'll copy bird pictures to desktop. Now this does exactly what we told it to do. It copies the directory. However, this, this directory is empty. What it doesn't do is copy over the contents of the directory. To copy over the contents of a directory, you need to use another command parameter, recurse. The dash recurse parameter lists the contents of the directory. Then if there are any subdirectories in that listing, it'll recurse or repeat the directory listing process for each of those subdirectories. We'll need to use the dash recurse parameter with copy to copy the contents of the directory along with the directory itself. We're going to use a new parameter, verbose. Copy doesn't output anything to the CLI by default unless there are errors. When we use copy-verbose, it'll output one line for each file of the directory being copied. Let's give it a try. Copy bird pictures. And the recurse and verbose flag. This just message says that we've already copied bird pictures. But what we didn't do was copy over the file, which is now here. Excellent. Now the directory and all the contents are copied to my desktop. Alrighty, now that we've learned how to list, create, and move around files and directories, let's start removing them. In the Windows GUI, if you wanted to remove a file or folder, just right-click and delete. The file ends up in the recycle bin, which you can find on your desktop. If you wanted to restore a file here, you could just right click and restore. If you empty your bin for any reason, you won't be able to retrieve those files. In PowerShell, the command to remove files and directories is rm or remove. Take caution when using remove because it doesn't use the recycle bin. Once the files or directories are removed, they're gone for good. Let's remove a file called text1.txt in my home directory. We can see, there it is. I'm just going to remove it. And now it's gone. The remove command might seem like a dangerous weapon in the wrong hands. Fortunately, there are safety measures in place that only give this ability to users that are actually authorized to use it. We'll talk more about file permissions in a different lesson, but let's take a quick look at what I mean. Let's remove a file called important system file. Oh, 
Oh, I get an error message saying that I don't have permission to delete this file. In some cases like this one, it's because it's been marked as a system file. In other cases, it might be because I don't have enough permissions in the file system to remove the file. I do have the right permissions this time, but since it is an important file, PowerShell wants to make sure that I meant to do this. If I repeat the command with the dash force parameter, remove will go ahead and remove the file. Let's, let's take a look. Dash force. And you can see the file's gone. If the file belongs to someone else, or if I'm not an administrator, then I might, have, might not have the right permissions to remove the file. In that case, I'll need to access an administrator account to remove the file. Okay, let's try removing a directory with remove next. Oh, here we go. Here's another place where PowerShell is going to ask us if we really meant to do this. Since this is in a directory, it contains other files, and we did not use the dash recurse parameter. We see a prompt asking us to confirm if we really want to remove the directory and all its contents. We can say yes or yes to all to continue. We can also cancel this command and run it again with the dash recurse parameter. That way, PowerShell knows that we understand the consequences of what we're doing. So let's go ahead and cancel this and try again. Dash recurse. Yep, now it's gone. And that's the remove command in a nutshell. Again, because of the nature of this command, you'll want to be extra careful when removing files or directories.